Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of the Tiny M series. Today we're going to start working on the drawer and then we'll move on to the extrusions and the frame. We will fix the uh, wrong drill hole locations and then we will probably move on to preparing the inner aluminium panels, sanding them and uh, making sure that they actually look decent. And uh, yeah, we'll see from there. The drawer is now printed and I also assembled well, most of it. But uh, yeah, you can see the drawer itself, the main body of it. It's just a single piece of ABS that I printed on my warranty without any issues. The insulated chamber probably helps a lot with that, but uh, yeah, no cracks, no bends, no warps, anything. It's just printed perfectly. This is, as I said, a single piece ABS, 10% infill, which should be more than enough since I also uh, strengthened the body with these uh, thicker parts as well. I assume it will be fine. And here you can see some bearings. Uh, these are just bearings that I had lying around. I think these are 608 or something. I could be wrong about the name. I'm not great at bearing names, but yeah, these are just some bearings I had lying around. And on, to on top of this, the spool holder part will sit. And uh, yeah, you can see the idea. It will rotate freely. And uh, yeah, we'll see how well it works. The spool holder part may need some rework. Uh, we'll see. On the sides, I mounted the uh, uh, rails. There are threaded inserts in there, uh, three per side, and on the other side we will have the other part of the rail mounted to the extrusions, and these are full opening uh, rails, so uh, yeah, it should be very easy to swap the spools or anything like that, it will be very easy, so it should work pretty well. On the front, here is the laser cut part that I had, the steel panel with the matte black vinyl wrap. And I attached it using M3 screws, I might uh, change this to a black screw, maybe, I don't know right now. But uh, yeah, I'm thinking about it. And here, uh, you can't see the holes because of the uh, wrap, but there are two 5.5mm uh, holes, and those are for the handle, so there will be a handle in the front. And uh, yeah, you can see the design, I think this will work pretty well, so uh, yeah, I guess let's wait for the rest of the parts to print, and then we will mount this to the tiny end. The drawer is now completely printed, I attached the handle in the front and this is the spool holder piece. The bearings are not on here anymore, it's in here because this is a bit tight but you can see that it fits on here nicely and unfortunately there is some uh, wobble. I, I know a way I can fix this in the, you know, in the files, I'm not going to reprint this though. Basically the what I think is going on is, since the bearings are on the bottom, uh, there is a word for it but I'm not great at physics so whatever you know if there's here's the base this top will be wob top will wobble more so you know there's a name for that I'm sure someone knows but um, yeah I think that's what's going on so I'm just going to make this pole taller and also uh, make the base of it taller as well and adjust this for that as well and uh, if you do print this this should work better for you but uh, even in this case it should work well for me so as I said I'm not going to reprint this and if we place the spool on this, you can see that it sits on here fairly nicely. This is intentionally a, a conical, well, other than the sharp tip. And that's so, uh, not every spool has the same uh, diameter in the hole. So it's just to make sure that most of the spools that you use will fit on here. And uh, yeah, you can see that it works. And if I pull on the filament, you can see that this uh, rotates fairly freely so there's no problem and if you are wondering how this is actually going to work in terms of the filament path uh, there is this piece that I printed this will sit like this around here and uh, there's going to be the extrusion here obviously for the z-axis so you know this will hold the uh, Bowden tube and it will run up behind the printer into the uh, uh, hot hand through the extruder which I still haven't decided what I'm going to use, maybe a drag drive on the tool head, maybe something in the back, I don't know right now. But uh, yeah, that's the filament path. And you can see that the dimensions etc. of this are pretty much correct, so uh, it fits in here nicely and it should be pretty smooth to open this as well. But as I said in the last episode, I got the height of this extrusion and the one on the other side wrong, so this needs to be 10 millimeters higher. I'll fix that after I print a new drill guide. And the uh, same goes for the the top extrusions in the middle as well. They are 10 millimeters too low, so they need to be 10 millimeters higher. 
but uh, yeah, other than that, the drilling should be uh, good enough. And obviously, I need to drill for the Z axis. But uh, this is the panel that will go on there, and this is one of the ways we can tell that I got that wrong. But uh, yeah, you can see the whole locations, and if I place it on here, you can see that the bottom ones line up, but the top ones don't. And yeah, as I said, 10 millimeters off, that's about it. So uh, yeah, need to fix that. And uh, you'll notice that the aluminium panels have a lot of scratches on them. I'm actually going to fix that. The What I did on the previous aluminium panels that I used on my other printers, like the Voron Zero for example, I sanded them and that got rid of most of the scratches on the surface. Not all, but uh, yeah, it will still look better. So that's the plan. But the first thing I'm going to do is uh, fix the extrusions here, you know, drill the new holes and uh, assemble the frame correctly this time and then we'll mount the drawer and then we'll get to this. So I did some work to fix the uh, problem with the spool holder itself, uh, the leverage effect, I think that's what it was called, I forgot a second ago. But uh, anyway, I fixed it by just uh, moving the where the bearings sit higher and obviously that should fix it, at least, at least reduce it, I shouldn't say fix, but uh, yeah, that should help you. And I also added a whole bunch of holes on the side. This is so that if you want to build this uh, drawer, you can use whatever uh, rails you want. You don't have to use the specific ones that I use because there's a good chance you can't find those in your country. So uh, I yeah, just added a whole bunch of holes. There are usually um, slits on the sides of those uh, rails. So you should be able to match at least a few of those holes and just use threaded inserts on those holes, not on every single one. And uh, yeah, use M3 button head screws with those. Uh, socket heads, at least in my rail, didn't work. And uh, yeah, that's basically the two changes I made. So uh, this is now available, well it was, but the updated version is also now available on the GitHub as well. So if you're interested in this, you can check it out in the description below. But uh, yeah, that's it for the work on the spool holder uh, slash drawer, I guess, so uh, we can move on. For the drilling of the extrusions, I fixed the drill guide, so you can see the unified single piece drill guide. I really wanted to combine the two sides into a you know, just a one channel version, but uh, these are 120 millimeters offset, these are 118 millimeters offset, so uh, that really didn't work. So it has two channels, but it is a single piece you can print and you don't really need that high of an infill. It's intentionally fixed so that the drill bit actually goes in straight, but uh, as I said, you don't need uh, thick, uh, I mean thick, but uh, you don't really need high infill. And these two blocks are just for aligning 2020s in the 2040 channels, so uh, yeah, that's that's for that. These two parts that are not related to the drill guide, I just uh, designed it in this file. And I also prepared the drill guide uh, guide here as well, so uh, if you want to build this printer, it should make your life a lot easier. This is not just for you, this is also for me. I mean, I do forget where to drill for this stuff. You can see that there are actually a lot of holes you need to drill, but uh, yeah, if you're interested in this, this is now also available on GitHub as well. So uh, yeah, if you are building this printer, which I doubt you are, but if you are, well, there you go, it's available. And uh, I'll do my best to keep the GitHub updated as much as I can, but uh, yeah, this, for now, anyway, this, this stuff is up there. And now we can actually drill the extrusions, make sure they're square, and then mount the drawer and move on to the rest of the stuff that's planned for this episode. The new and correct drill guide is printed and I actually went ahead and drilled the holes needed, so you can see that the frame is now assembled again, but this time it is correctly assembled. And because of that reason, I assembled this in my kitchen where I have granite countertops. So it is actually assembled on a fl uh, flat surface, which should be better. And uh, yeah, you can see the printer here. I also in installed the drawer we worked on. And you can see that it's super smooth and works pretty well. And even with filament, this should still work uh, pretty well. So I'm happy with how the drawer turned out as well. Now uh, you'll notice these extrusions aren't in their correct place and well these are actually loose. That is on purpose so that I can actually uh, make sure the gantry is flat and whatever when I actually get to building it. And these aren't in their places because 
to a line that I need a printed piece but uh, yeah overall it's assembled so the actual outer shell is assembled and as long as that's square it should be pretty easy to get the inside square as well so it shouldn't uh, be a big problem also assemble the door here so the door as I showed in the cat will sit here and it will have the hinges so this will open and uh, yeah that's basically the design don't know what else to say about it now uh, you'll see some extra holes as I said because I drilled them in the wrong place in the last episode but uh, there will be panels in the front and on the sides covering them so that won't really be an issue and uh, yeah this is basically all I wanted to share I guess so uh, yeah BRB with whatever is next I guess guest wow next I'm going to send these panels so that they actually look uh, pretty decent without that uh, you can see some scratches on these and they're also too shiny for my taste but if you actually look at some of the panels uh, yeah you can see a decent amount of scratches it's not too bad but I still prefer a more uh, matte finish on that and I know I can achieve that by sanding it so uh, yeah, I'm going to sand that. This is the only sander I have, unfortunately, so I know this will uh, take me a while. I know this is not ideal, but it will work. I've done it before, so uh, yeah, I guess let's get to it. I'll just use 40 grit, 120 grit, then 180 grit, and uh, as I said, the finish should be pretty nice after I'm done. I actually found my 80 grit sandpaper as well, so when I went from 40 to 80 to 120 to 180, and this is the finish we get. This is exactly what I wanted, it's this matte and kind of rough finish, exactly what I want as I said. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, so I guess I'll work on the rest of the panels and then I'll show you when I'm done. It took me about two hours to go through every single aluminium panel, but I've sanded every single one of them, so they now look like this. It's a nice, uh, kind of rough, but not really that rough and uh, matte finish compared to the shiny usual aluminium finish, which I definitely prefer this over that. I mean, I don't like shiny surfaces in general. That's why I go with Hilbert Curve on my prints. And uh, until I had some adhesion problems, I always printed on the rough side of the PI sheet. So uh, yeah, that's just, I just prefer matte surfaces. And I think this looks pretty well. There is a small scratch here that I couldn't get rid of on this specific panel, but uh, on, for, on the most of them, I managed to get rid of pretty much every scratch. There are a few more here and there, but uh, yeah, this definitely looks better. But while doing this, I also ruined the backside on pretty much every single panel. That's though um, because I didn't really take any precautions. I could have. I was aware of this happening on my uh, on the previous place that I sanded, but. Uh, I didn't bother in this case because not only this won't be visible from the front, it won't even be visible from the back because I will stick the adhesive uh, insulation on this and then there will be yet another panel on top because it's a panel sandwich except in one area but even in there there's a uh, insulation so uh, yeah this none of this will be visible that's why I didn't bother and that's why I only sanded uh, one side of these but uh, yeah I think these turned out pretty well I think they look pretty nice so uh, yeah, uh, these are now ready to be installed on the Tiny M when I get to building it, but I have to print the parts first, obviously. So uh, before we end the episode for today, let's get to the topic of filaments. So before we end the episode, let's talk about the filament selection. In the last episode, I said I wasn't really sure what filament I was going to use. I obviously already discovered this specific filament, but I was looking at other options and I also asked for some opinions in the comments as well and I also did some research on my own since then as well. And this is basically the list it came down to, the best-ish options. Now uh, I'll start with something that was recommended in the comments, Annealed PLA and Volcano PLA, basically the same thing, it's just a brand name. The, there are two problems with this setup, one, it can warp in the oven. And two, uh, PLA already is kind of brittle in my experience, and when you anneal it, it becomes even more brittle. So, uh, yeah, I don't think this will work that well for the setup, so I had to eliminate this. This would be the cheapest option, that would be nice, but uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to work, so I, I moved on. Another thing that was recommended in the comments, and I also did my research on this before seeing it in the comments as well, is PC. PC could work in theory based on what I've read, but 
I couldn't find anyone who built a PC Voron or PC uh, Doom Cube more specifically, but even a Voron. So uh, I don't know if this will work or not, and honestly, I don't really want to risk it at this point. And the same goes with PC ABS as well. It could work in theory, but uh, again, I couldn't find anyone who built a uh, high temperature Voron based on this stuff. I could be wrong about that, but I did use the Discord search stuff, so um, yeah, I couldn't find anything, but at the same time, Discord search isn't that great, so who knows. There's also MJF, which is actually nylon. MJF is the process. Uh, that should work. I know at least one person who has an all basically all MJF for on Doom Cube and it works well and well nylon is rated for this stuff so um, yeah it could work well but at the same time getting MJF printed nylon it's just way too expensive to justify like it would cost a thousand to two thousand dollars and uh, yeah I don't really want to spend that much on this. And uh, there's a similar problem with PVDFC Max. This is something that was recommended when I asked about it on the Doom Discord. And I actually trust the person that recommended this to me, but um, yeah, I'm sure it will work. But I really can't just justify paying a thousand dollars when you add shipping and customs to this. So I'd have to order two rolls because it's pre dense. So uh, two kilos and customs and shipping, and it's just. Yeah, I can't really justify that, and plus another negative is it's not black, and I like black parts. That's not an absolute must, but it definitely is a factor. So I ended up deciding on CFPPA, or this stuff, it's the same stuff. It's just high temperature nylon carbon fiber, and uh, yeah, this seems to be the best candidate for this build. And I already ordered a kilo of this from the 3D X tech, so uh, it should be here probably next week or something. The HL is kind of slow these days, but it still beats FedEx, so whatever. I'm pretty happy with them, with their service anyway. So, uh, yeah, this is the filament that the printer will be printed out of, assuming I don't have any problems, but obviously who knows. So stay tuned for that. It will probably be in the next episode, but uh, again, we will see. But uh, that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did, please leave me a like down below and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the next episode of the series. And uh, yeah, that's it, so thanks for watching.